Well, I say, what? Ho, oh, I am Brian. Call me Santa's little helper, uh, gardener, coming to you from Ramblon Towers Dungeon Studio in scenic Hespler, Ontario. And this, this is Ramblon Radio, episode number 39, the only dedicated Led Zeppelin podcast on this or any other known internets. Be sure to go to RamblonRadio.com for all your Led Zeppelin news, any links I might mention during the show. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Ramblon Blog. Uh, check out our Facebook page, or my Facebook page, uh, Ramblon Radio, Google Plus. Plus, um, you can listen to this podcast on iTunes. You can listen to it on Spreaker. You can listen to it on SoundCloud. If you, if you get enough iTunes, give a review. Give us a quick review, uh, a couple of stars, whatever. Um, Same goes Spreaker, follow. Um, uh, these little things help help to to promote it. Help help me to kind of push it in further directions. Um, to th- this is the Christmas episode. It's Black Friday, uh, or specifically, it's what do they call this? Monday something Monday, online Monday. Or, but uh, Black Friday was this weekend, so which is kind of the official start of the Christmas season for you guys in the States, which I've always taken as my official start as well, because it seems, you know, it's a nice three, four weeks before. None of this October 1st stuff for me. So, uh, and I got out to Record Store Day. Did, did, did anybody out there get to uh, Black Friday Record Store Day? Um, picked up picked up a Christmas thing actually Lionel and Lucy a little 45 which was nice picked up a couple of Miles Davis albums um and uh I'm trying to think it was one or Rolling Stones uh, it was a sing it's a single but it's like got about five songs on it that's a live of you got it I believe um didn't and you know what no um no Led Zeppelin related stuff this time. Uh, a couple of years back they did a couple of I think there was three uh, Jimmy Page era Yardbird singles were put out on record store day. Um, and that was nice. it was kind of nice to have. Wouldn't, wouldn't it have been great if uh, they had the 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 remasters ready to go? And um, like two years ago, the Stones did a remaster plus expanded remaster of um, XL on Main Street, and they released one of the songs, one of the new songs that they had dug up from the archives as a single. I uh, think song called "Plunder My Soul." They did that for Record Store Day. That would have been so cool to have, like, a new Led Zeppelin song um, for Record Store Day. <laughs> I might have lined, I might have actually lined up for that. But anyway, that's kind of the official official start of Christmas. And I have, the, it's rum and eggnog tonight, and we're going to, uh, uh, although it's a funny, funny eggnog. It's actually clear. It's not yellow, and it, it's a little different. It tastes more or less like eggnog, but it's, it's, there's something different about it. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go over the, uh, the the Christmas list for the Led Zeppelin fanatic, i.e. you and me. Um, you can make notes to give to your significant other. Or if, um, you know, you're more live with one of these people, one of us peoples. Um, well, pull out your pen. We're, we're going to go at it. But uh, first, I'm going to talk um well, not going to talk about it. Uh, John Paul Jones was out uh, the last week. Uh, doing a little touring in the southern states with the Dave Rowling's machine. Um, if you haven't checked it out, there is a bootleg floating around. There is from uh, last Thursday or something. Uh, I, I forget the date right offhand. Um, but it's, uh, and I had to listen to it. Uh, it's 20 some odd songs, and they did a full set. I wondered if, like, Jones was out for one or two songs. He was doing the full, he did the full show, did the whole show on mandolin. Um, I guess not surprising. There was an interview last year when uh, he talked about, you know, do you play every day? Uh, I think it was last New Year's, actually. And, and he said, well, I, I, I tend to pick up the mandolin every day because it's sitting out. It's small and it's there. And I, I so I go past it. I play it for a while every day. So it's not surprising that he sits, can play mandolin. But I don't think I've ever seen a set where he does like an hour and a half of playing mandolin. Um, so it was a little, um, it was kind of nice. It was neat to listen to. It's not bad music. It's that, uh, this, uh, the folksy country stuff like, uh, Robert Plant was into a bit. Um, although I, I would say the singing is a little more intense in, with Dave Rawlings. Not, not, uh, not so reserved as, uh, as Robert was tending to be the last couple albums. 
uh, and Jillian Welsh was with them, and her and Dave Rollins have a thing together anyway, and, and they make real nice harmonies together. So that was nice, and um, yeah, we're, it's a nice, not always, uh, there were times when, I, okay, this is a little too country for me, um, but not entirely so, and uh, certainly worth listening, if you get a chance, worth listening to, worth listening to, you know, John Paul Jones as, as a mandolin player for an hour and a half, um, that's... Uh, that's, um, yeah, and I was going to give you the set list, but uh, um, you have no idea how much work that would be at this stage, I think. And my computer's being really funny. Uh, it's taken me about half an hour just to get everything cranked up and turned on so it'll do this. And, um, yeah, you see, I, I'm, tr I'm just trying to bring up the finder so I can maybe give you the set list. And, uh, I mean, it's taken forever. It's taken for friggin' ever here. It's uh, it's crazy. Oh, I think. Oh, I think this is crazy. Uh, if I could see a text file here, I might be able to do it. Christmas list. There it is. Info dot text. Let's see if I can get this up without too much fuss. But anyway, no, you know, nobody. Did. They did do uh, going to California. And they did the wait. And and I, if you go to the, if you go to rambleonradio.com, I did post a couple of videos. One of going to California, one of the wait. Now, Dave um, uh, Rawlings does say at the beginning of this show that they they started the tour on the Wednesday, and um, they all flew in on the Tuesday. So they had one day rehearsal before this tour started. And he did say for this show that they were doing. This was a Birmingham, Alabama, on the twenty seventh. So what's that? Uh, there's a third, yeah, it's going to be about last, last Wednesday or, or so-ish, right? I need a calendar in the room. I mean, as, as nice as these phones are, and it's nice to have a calendar where you can just look quick. Oh, that's what's going on. 27th was last Wednesday, so I've been right all along on that. And, um, here's the set list. You may not know half, most of this stuff. I don't, but, uh, I'm a lonesome hobo, uh, hot corn, cold corn, dry bones, Wayside back in time, ain't no more time, came for the Brazos. To be young is to be free is to be high. Keep it clean, monkey and the engineer, the bells of Harlem, it's too, it's too easy. That's the first set. The second set, Ruby, Billy, he will set your fields on fire. Sweet tooth, I hear them all, stew ball. Method acting slash Cortez the killer, Queen Jane approximately. Going to California, look at Miss Ohio, the midnight special, the wait. And the band is in total uh, Dave Rowlings, Jillian Welsh, John Paul Jones, plus Willie Watson and Paul Court. And Willie Watson picks up a couple of songs, I know. Um, and Jillian Welsh, I think, picks up a couple of songs. And the rest is Dave Rowlings. Um, really, Willie Watson, by the way, is OCMS, by the way. Paul Court of the Punch Brothers. I have no idea what OCMS is. Um... But it's a good, it's a fairly good bootleg. It's floating around. It's in the torrents. And, uh, sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Time to get on to what you really want to hear, get to here. Christmas. You're, you're getting ready. For, you're putting together your Christmas list. And you're thinking to yourself, what do I really want? As a Led Zeppelin fan, or, as I said, somebody you love is the Led Zeppelin fanatic. And you're going, what can I get this guy? It's got everything. It's got a Zeppelin on it. He's got it. I mean, my wife walks into my room and sees the Them Crooked Vultures clock on the wall. Or, um, you know, uh, I have a, a big framed poster and, and all of it, right? So here's some ideas. Here's some ideas. Start with the actual, let's start with the music. Uh, the music's available in a variety of formats. Um, last year, they, they released the the um, um, the remasters that we're waiting for patiently on MP3 at iTunes, and they also did so. They also did so at LiveDownloads.com. So you can go to t iTunes, and you, I believe you can buy the whole whack. It's one hundred twenty nine dollars or something. Buy them the whole whack. I'm pretty sure they can deliver it to a person's computer if you have their email address and stuff, uh, and probably on the day. Uh, and alternately, get them an iTunes gift card or something. Um, and, and like I said, um, um, LiveDownloads.com has the same files. Uh, now I got into this a bit with somebody online a few weeks back, three, four or five weeks. He said, well, they wouldn't be the same. 
wouldn't be the same file. He got going on some silliness about, well, the Apple files are X. And so anything that's not X must be um, a, a derivation at worst of those Apple files. And I don't see how they could possibly have the same masters that Apple has for the iTunes. And, uh, well, the reason is it's, the files are made. They're not made in MP3 format. They're made in a friggin' Wave or probably some very high-end version of Wave in the studios and then converted to MP3. They're not made by iTunes. They're remastered by Led Zeppelin and licensed iTunes, and they're perfectly legitimate to license them to any other company they want to license them to in any format they want to license them in. It's that simple, really. Led Zeppelin owns it. They license it to iTunes. They allow iTunes to put the Master for iTunes sticker on it, but the same Masters can go out to any company. And they would have the conversion tools to convert it themselves and send it to the companies that want it. It wouldn't be the companies that do the converting. So this silliness of, well, only iTunes could possibly have a, it's a, I, and a, I, you know, I kind of went there once and then said, ah, screw this. I'm not, I'm not arguing this, this, that's just silliness. But anyway, so anyway, livedownloads.com has, has the files. iTunes have the files. Then there's the LPs. Go to the used record stores. You can dig up the LPs. Go on iTunes. You can dig up the LPs. Don't have a turntable? You can get turntables. You can get. I have an Ion turntable, and I know the the turntable geeks and the real audio geeks hate these things. Hate these things. Say the say I'm ruining my records. So what? So what? I'll be dead in twenty years, thirty years, and what do I care what happens to my records? And, you know, if, if if I imagine if I had a heart attack tomorrow, my family's not preserving the records. They're in, they're in the landfill. So, you know, <laughs> I, I enjoy this. You can also get these Crosley ones that uh, you can actually put them in the living room. They look nice and they, you know, sound nice. So how about one of those and a couple albums? Um, they also come in, you know, 8-track. And uh, I have an 8-track player I bought a couple of years ago on, on iTunes. And uh, I have once in a while I play it here. And I, I've talked about it, I think. But if you go on iTunes, or not iTunes, on eBay. Uh, if you go on eBay, you can find... Um, both 8-track players, portable 8-track players are great, and there's plunger type is, is really the cool ones to look for, but they're a bit pricier. Everybody seems to want those. Um, the one I got is GE, and it's just a regular portable. It's got a big, like a 10-inch speaker, and it sounds great, actually. Really shockingly good sound. And, uh, you know, and the 8-tracks are there for buck ninety nine to five ninety nine. Everything from the first album to In Through the Outdoor is available on a track fairly easily. Now, Coda probably is. I don't think I've seen Coda. I know I don't have it. But by 82, when Coda came out, a tracks were really pretty much a dead thing. They still did have them. Um, uh, well, up into 84, they were selling a tracks I think. Um, but good luck finding Coda. Coda would be expensive because not very many people would have bought it. Uh, it'd be the priciest of the bunch, um, but you know you could get you could really could get for a hundred bucks you could probably get an eight track player and and the ten eight tracks if you want to spend some time digging around eBay to find all that stuff. Probably for a hundred bucks you could get it all. Uh, I'm assuming you live in the states, by the way. Most of this stuff seems to be in the states, and it's expensive to ship out of the states. Um, conversely, you could do cassettes as well. You know, if, if your Led Zeppelin fan grew up in the '80s, he may prefer cassettes to eight tracks. Um, <laughs> No, go for it. Uh, same deal, right? You could buy cassette players, buy a portable cassette player, or maybe he has a cassette player at home still. I do. And um, buy cassettes. Buy him some, rebuy him the cassettes. They're out there. Um, uh, an alternate option, if he's got the equipment, you may not want to go all out on this one, um, but if he happens to have a reel-to-reel -reel player from way back when, you can get the reel. They did release reel-to-reels as as standalone albums they did do this and um, um you can find them they're expensive though it's a pricey way to go um but yeah that's something plus the cds right you could always just get the C does he have all the cds um so that's that's you know that that would be the first thing as well i would add at jimmy at jimmypage.com you can still buy death wish 2 for 30 pounds or lucifer's rising for 20 pounds and that's LPs. That's LPs. Um, I would add they also. He also has. Remember, he did the five fine art photographs. 
Um, he still has those. They're at 1250, I think it's in pounds, 1250 per. Well, I say what? Ho, oh, I am Brian. Call me Santa's little helper, uh, gardener, coming to you from Ramblon Towers Dungeon Studio in scenic Hespler, Ontario. And this, this is Ramblon Radio, episode number 39, the only dedicated Led Zeppelin podcast on this or any other known internets. You can listen to it on SoundCloud. If you if you get it off iTunes, give a review. Give us a quick review, uh, a couple stars, whatever. Um, Same goes Spreaker, follow. Um... Uh, these little things help help to to promote it. Help help me to kind of push it in further directions. Um, be sure to go to RambleOnRadio.com for all your Led Zeppelin news. Any links I might mention during the show. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at RambleOnBlog. Uh, check out our Facebook page or my Facebook page, uh, Ramblon Radio, Google Plus Plus. Um, you can listen to this podcast on iTunes. You can listen to it on Spreaker. This is the Christmas episode. It's Black Friday, uh, or specifically, it's what do they call this? Monday, something Monday, online Monday. Or, but uh, Black Friday was this weekend, so which is kind of the official start of the Christmas season for you guys in the states, which I've always taken as my official start as well, because it seems you know it's a nice three four weeks before. None of this October first stuff for me. So. Uh, and I got out to Record Store Day. Did, did, did anybody out there get to uh, Black Friday Record Store Day? Um, picked up, picked up a Christmas thing actually. Lionel and Lucy, a little forty-five, which was nice. Picked up a couple of Miles Davis albums. Um, 